Uh, I this is my first time smoking this. Um, there's this strain that I found. I can't remember the the, the house that that, that uh, grows it, but it's called Where's My Bike. Oh shit! I and heard uh, that. it's fucking great. It's a sativa. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, it's been out the past like four or five times. Uh, oh, gone there. Buds. I w- this is the best. I've yeah. never had this before. This, this is, is great. the best yeah. brands. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's all it. like, I mean, <laughs> it's really or whatever. Good. It's really good. <laughs> But they had so four. Hard. They had a really good. Like, they had forty percent sherbet or some something that they used to smoke all the time. Um, yeah, they had forty percent off when I went in there again. It, like you know, I don't know how much of this is gamesmanship, but like or salesmanship, but it's like literally buy an ounce and like half the staff comes over and is like. Oh yeah, that was yeah. the first thing I bought when I got my employee discount, and you're actually getting that at my discount. I'm like. <laughs> All right. You know, cool. I'm like, it'll be gone a week and a half. My uh, my weed shop does that too, and I don't. Oh. It's it's funny because like, at, at sometimes I'm like, man, you guys are just like really into your job, and other times I'm like, man, are you guys be really coached this much to like, oh, look at the buds but, on this one. Yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. bro, come over here. Everybody, come look at the buds. Look I, how okay. crystally they I are. Oh, like, yeah, no, no. See, I haven't. I've never experienced. I, I get that. that a lot. At I this, can't, at the evergreen over fuck here. That, no. Fuck yeah. that. Fuck that. I'm it's not very that. strange. But so, you know, but on the other side of that. You know, I've become friendly with a lot of the yeah. staff there. Yeah. I've actually a couple of the staff of my clients now. They come yeah. to sound baths and shit. Nice. Um, and and like, but the 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 vibe that I get from them is like they really are that fucking I, well, dude, that, that, that about, nice. Yeah. Well, it, it would know? also be. Like it's a good job to have yeah. if you like weed. I mean, totally. I mean, it's like I loved working at a fucking record store. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. I was smoking weed during yeah. that, but like, it's yeah, that's cool. Yeah. If I was that age. I would. I mean, I shouldn't say that age because I know people of all ages that work at yeah, stores. But true. if I was, if I was like, if for me, that job would be great. If I was like in my early twenties, late twenties, oh, yeah. you know, I would even do that as like, if I had a se- if I needed a second job, totally. I would totally work at a weed shop. Yeah, you know, I think that would just it, again, I think it'd be fun. You know, it's a cool atmosphere as long as. I know there's some weed shops that aren't very safe, you know, yeah. that have issues with robberies and shit like oh, that. Yeah, so yeah. I think it's yeah. like depending on where you're at in the world, but. Um, but yeah, man, I think it'd be fucking great. No, I mean, every time I walk like, into a weed shop, I'm like, you guys fucking lucked the fuck yeah. out. They're all just chilling in there. All of them are high. They're just like, like they literally like go get high in a break. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, it's you know the weed shop. I always go. I don't. To, to be honest, I actually don't really like going to weed shops. I don't like it because yeah. most of the time I don't. I have a pretty good idea of like where I'm, are we fucking recording what are we doing yeah we're recording yeah. Ah, fucking. <laughs> well but like well, i know what you... i'm i know what i'm doing and then so it's like i don't want to sit there and what like be wait behind a guy who's just like what's that what's that what's well, do you that do the online ordering i don't because um a lot of times especially i buy flour most of the time i want to see yeah. what the fuck i'm yeah. buying yeah. yeah i mean i trust that stoners are going to do right but it's just also like well I've also, you know, I don't really buy by label anymore. Yeah. yeah. If I get if I get an ounce, I'll go into the store and I'll take a look at it. Yeah. Uh, if I'm getting like edibles or a roll of edibles or, like or yeah. pre-roll or something, I'm just that like, yeah, just throw sure. that shit yeah. online. Yeah. Yeah. Just go pick it up, man. Word. Save ten yeah. percent. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fuck. I love. I, it just. It still. It still tickles me every time I go into a. Oh, it's shop. still yeah. surreal. I was, it is surreal. You know, we actually had yeah. some friends in town from Michigan, where I think it's legal in Michigan, but uh, not, but not. where they're at. In I think they're in Grand Rapids area. It's not like as booming as it is out here, where like yeah. everybody's like, "Hey, let's fucking throw weed shops everywhere now," and uh, and so we took them to their first weed shop, and I just forget the experience that people walk in. It's like, well, and the weed shops the out here are different because I've been to one in California, and it's very cold, very medicinal. Yes. You have to go Oregon, through a cage of Oregon's, security. Oregon's the best. Oregon's the best. But the vibe is just like it feels like a fucking coffee shop walking yeah. in. So and I it's bright and totally colorful. agree. I'm going to LA and Friday, so I'll come back with first hand thing. And yeah, it is. It is much more of a shittier vibe. Yeah. yeah. That being said, last time I was in Hollywood, I think I told you guys about this when we were supposed to go to see Loggins and Messina and shit. Right. Went to a place just because the weed shop I Googled, like, this is close or on the way. It was called the Artist Tree. It had a fucking smoking lounge upstairs. Oh, like, with yes. With a fucking rooftop patio. Oh, that's dope. Servers would bring you... We didn't order anything, but, like, huh. servers could bring you 
all the all the paraphernalia, but you could order fucking like pancakes and shit. Yeah, and see, that's what I want to see it grow too. Yeah. It was the only one. It was the only one. Yeah, and and, I've never. Um, yeah, I've never seen like, a legal version of that. before. Vancouver, BC. I've done it in BC. Yeah. I've never. I was blown. I can't away. believe there's not one out here. And like we were like, you know, Tiffany had been to fucking Amsterdam. Amsterdam's the shit. Yeah. But it's just like so. Like we've done that. And mm-hmm. That's still the best. But it's just like being able to smoke in a fucking lounge just yeah. with other heads. Well, I, I mean, I've been talking about this for a while, and it's not my idea, but just this is an idea that I love to think about. But um, I see I see in the very in the future, once we federally legalize mm-hmm. marijuana and cannabis, whatever, um, it being the version of like breweries, right? Where yeah. you can go into the space and tour the grow rooms and yeah. see all the different buds and the different stages and maybe sample some of this so shit. But that- then also have a restaurant that's catered to the, the Tasting weed, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right? That weed shop... Again, coolest one of the coolest weed shops I've been to in in LA, the mm-hmm. one with the lounge, had fucking live plants and their fucking mm, thing. They cool. had their clones. They had a fucking room you could walk into and look at live plants. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So like, kind of what you described, but yeah. that's yeah. the only one I've heard of, and I found it on fucking accident. Yeah. Might not even be open now. Yeah, it's that I weird that. gray area that weed is in. It's not quite it's legal, bullshit. but it is legal. But you can't do it on the. Sh- you know, it's just. A yeah. coworker was talking about going to Europe and stuff and backpacking. I'm like, just flying in and out of Schiphol, which is Amsterdam. You know, that's a big hub. And then you just, you're in Amsterdam and yeah. Amsterdam's a shit. And I'm like, you know, that being said, Washington's got more liberal fucking weed laws than they do now. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I've, huh. I've been enough times to like, yeah. they've ratcheted down coffee shops mm. every time. Like, oh, every time. And I'm sure the numbers show that. But like, there is way less weed there now. Mm. Still not legal. Interesting. But, you know, again, you could still go to a fucking place and smoke a fucking joint mm-hmm. and have a double espresso. Yeah. yeah. You know, and yeah. that's, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah I like I'd that. like to, I like doing that anyway. Yeah. I would, I would prefer like to, to do, do that <laughs> at the fucking coffee shop instead yeah. of getting my coffee to go. Right. Yeah. yeah. And doing that in my car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I think Alaska was one of my favorite places to go to a weed shop at. And, um, and it was, it, it was very Seattle esque, you know, it was mm-hmm. very warm and friendly and a bunch of varieties and shit. But what I loved about them is when you got like when you got any flower, they would pull this big fucking jar of whatever flower yeah. you wanted out and be like, "Do you like this bud?" And then they throw it on the scale. Do you like that bud? And they, they, they you got to choose. You yeah. got to pay. Yeah, like, yeah. This is oh. fucking cool. Oregon, man. That's Oregon, way Oregon sells like Oregon, like you know, has the big jars just yeah. on display. Yeah, and then they will. Uh, you know, open the jar and then take a pocket sized fan over the jar. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's you know, to 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 get you the what to waft the fucking that's smell. Beautiful. But I then they that. just weigh you a sack, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's funny, I you know, Oregon's one of the nicer, one of the older weed shops in Oregon. I've been to a couple of them. And uh we end up, yeah, Tiffany's got good taste, buys the best shit. <laughs> of course. You know, the fucking most, it's like $17 a gram. That's like more than what I fucking paid in high school. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, fuck. I think blow is cheaper than that. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> it's definitely not. It's definitely not. <laughs> but uh, from what I heard. Yeah. <laughs> from what I hear in the streets. But uh, it's funny because you, you get this. First of all, the, the, the staff is just as knowledgeable. But it's end up we ended up like a year apart buying the same grower both times. Just because it's just like some people are really on top of their shit. But yeah. you're dealing with a huge jar. Yeah. And they're just bringing you like, yeah, it is. It's better. I love that. I never went to the medical thing before we went legal. Neither. Yeah, me either. And that, that's what the way it was, okay. from what I understand from friends of mine that did it, was that it was cool until... In fact, he was, I think at the time, actually against it going legal because the medical thing was so fucking tight. Yeah. Like, as far as, like, well, you know... Well, kept the community small, I feel like, and it would that, be... That, you yeah. know, you wouldn't deal with what I just complained about, you yeah. know, as far as going to a weed shop, and then it's also like you go there and buy flour at a better price, and yeah. it's just like... Yeah. They're doing what you're talking about. Yeah. Well, I even... I mean, until maybe a year and a half ago, I still bought from a person... I still bought from a person. Yeah. I never didn't yeah. go to stores. I mean, they were there, and obviously, if I needed to, I could go to one. Yeah. But, I usually just go know, for pre rolls. But the beautiful thing that, that I saw, like right when all of this got, you know, legalized, <clears throat> is that a lot of the growers that worked for these these places, like, would take plants home or would be gifted plants and all this stuff, and yeah. so they would be able to like take some stuff and 
you know, sell it to their friends. Yeah. And so I was getting, you know, like a hundred dollar ounces for. Well, see, that's the thing is like years. the last like, this time. This is great. Yeah. The last, last, <laughs> last time I bought weed off somebody, you know, illegally. Yeah. Like straight up illegally. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it was a hundred dollars an ounce, and I don't know what the fuck he was charging before all this shit, but it probably wasn't that. Yeah, and he doesn't do it anymore because it's not worth his fucking time. Yeah, and it's just kind of like you know that's the whole thing. You can't you know the little guys are getting you know his business and shit, but it's just kind of like hundred dollars an ounce. I now it's funny. It's like you can buy you could buy shit for like literally thirty five dollars an ounce. Yeah, well, like it's absurd. Dude, we yeah. used to buy pounds back in the day for four twenty. Nostalgic. <laughs> But then that was also Texas weed. Yeah, yeah that's right. Whoa. You're getting you're getting a pound that's Brown. like it's like the size of like a a, a card deck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's awesome. All fucking compressed yeah. and shit. Just Stems and whoa. seeds. Fucking like smells like eat- tied with bleach. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, you gotta wrap it in tide. Yep, I gotta get across the border somehow. Yeah. <laughs> Can't shove that in somebody's ass. That's true. <laughs> Sticky coming out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Stems are pinchy. Uh, That's right. Saran wrap and then tide. Yep, yep. Yeah. yeah. Dead in the smell. Yeah, when we used to get the random times we would get good weed in Texas, um, it would go through so many people's hands, and it was so expensive. Yeah, you get, get like half a nug for fucking thirty bucks. You're like, yeah. what did I do? Hundred, yeah, hundred dollars yeah. for an eighth. Uh. And by the time it got to you, it was maybe a gram because Ugh. so many hands bit passed through, and everybody was like, "Oh, that looks good," and they'll take their little piece. And yeah, their little piece. Uh, they and won't like, notice this little. I'm like, what the fuck is this? But then you know, it's like you've never at. Where I was at, that was such a rarity to get anything that actually looked like something you saw in high times. Right. You know, all the shit we had was like so dirty and nasty and dark green <coughs> and like just stringy and weed that only and exists shit. in movies. Oh my god! Super so spoiled bad. growing up here. We just always had good weed. No, but like even the say, shittiest weed was still. I mean, amazing. Well, weed. okay. I have funny thing about that. So I brought a pa- I brought two pounds up here with me when I moved up. We smoked a pound on the way here, which was fun. We smoked in every single state. That was our goal. Smoked a pound on the way here. Yeah, it took us about because we went up to Indiana. And well, you guys were real big too. You and rolled then, big. And yeah, we rolled you did, you did half and... tobacco, half no, weed. No, 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 just full, but straight. Yeah. No, no, no. Also, didn't hit the dome the way that you know shit oh, on no, the totally, table totally. Yeah. Um, yeah I could not even fathom smoking a pound now in, no. in, a, in an amount of time that would be f- like impressive yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly hey Andre but, uh, the giant <laughs> <right>. <laughs> but when we got up here I still had a pound with me and I put it in the fridge you know, on the bottom in the, in, the, in, the, in the vegetable drawer for like a couple months because I was getting good weeded. I was like, oh my God, this is fantastic. I don't care what I'm paying for it. It's cheaper than what I was paying Literally, it's like, for. why would you bring Texas weed to Washington? I just Washington? wanted to make sure. Right. Just in oh, case sure. I okay. Okay. You got to meet yeah. somebody first. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. And so I let it sit there for almost two months. And by the time I finally remembered and I got back to it, it had improved. It had gotten so much the air better. air quality. Yeah, like the air quality of Washington in general is just <laughs> like, no, no, no. The we can't like, tolerate this. The we weed was like, do thank you. Do, do, do you think thank it, you. <laughs> do you think it, do you think it had a, do you think it had a, goddamn, do you think it had a reverse fucking like decarbolization fetch? I don't know, oh, man. I didn't ask questions. I just absorbed <laughs> the magic. No, man. but you know what I'm saying? Like when you bake, you put shit in the oven. Like yeah, you put yeah. shit in the uh-huh. oven before you actually do shit with it. To like proof you put it or whatever. Yeah, like well, you put the the fucking you make you you blend the weed and you put it on the fucking baking sheet for half hour at yeah, one twenty yeah. or one fifty or whatever the fuck it is to like wake up the weed. Yeah. I think you putting it in the fridge was just kind of like waking up the weed. Could have woke up the dude, weed, fucking man. ice age, bro. Dude. It's like <laughs> dude, that little scratch guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was the best, man. I was so impressed and happy and just, just smoked it and didn't have Plants like it up here, man. Yeah. I actually, the, I got pulled over one time uh, when I, uh, when I, f- I'd moved, I'd lived here for six months and, and uh, my roommate and I were living in Mill Creek and we, you know, we just smoke a lot of weed, right? Mm-hmm. You know, there's this, it is what it is, right? Everybody's got their vices or whatever you want to call it. And so when we were moving out from that apartment, we were moving to Linwood and, and I took the last load and the last load had like, at that point in time, I had this bit like five foot bong, you know, I, oh, uh, Jesus. I still had my safe. So I, I just freshly, freshly moved up from <laughs> Texas, still like six months old. Right. And so I still had my weed safe with like shake in the bottom of it. I had a garbage can that was caked on the inside with tobacco from blunts and shit. Right. 
and uh, and then some other odds and ends like fucking laundry detergent shit like that. And so I go through this uh, this yellow light, and it was yellow, but fucking cop pulled me over. And I also had an eighth of weed and a pipe underneath my seat. Oh, that's great. And so cop pulled me over, and I'm like, I'm going to jail. Yeah. I'm I'm going to jail. I mean, if uh, th- not a good all feeling. circumstances put me uh, put that in Texas, I'm in jail for at least a year. Oh, at least at a year. least. And yeah, I know dude. this. My brother You're went learning to jail like for prison currency and shit for, for having a half a blunt, right? Yeah. And so I get, I pull over. Cop comes up. He's like, "Hey, it smells in here." And I'm like, "Yes, it does." He's like, "Do you have things in the car?" I'm like, "Yes, I do." They're like, "Okay, well, pop on out. Let's search your car." And I'm like, "Fuck, cuff me up." <laughs> Put me on the side of the road, and I just—I was sitting there, and just like fuck, man, you know, like all the, you know, mom's gonna kill me, dad's gonna kill me, just life you know. flashing. I'm about to go back to Texas. I don't yep. know what the fuck's gonna happen. All this shit, right? You yep. can get deported. See back the bong. To the... They break the bong. They're going through glass so, bong. Glass bong. Five foot glass bong. All within all That's the a stuff lot of that money they... for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had it for years. Yeah. With all the stuff that I had had, uh, they thought I was a grower. Mm. and so then they sent me to they're like where'd you move from where were you coming from and i sold the apartment and so they actually sent patrol units down there to check the apartment because they thought it was a grower so they're like fucking looking for bulbs yeah, so yeah, yeah, it was yeah. almost like four hours i was Holy on the side of the road shit. and uh and i'm just like accepting my fate at that time and uh and so the cop comes over and it's like okay so we we found this 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 is there anything else I'm like no that's all i know it's in there you guys found it all blah 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 talk to me for a minute and they're like okay um took the cuffs off sign here <coughs> i'm like okay and they're like okay here's your ticket make sure you're in court in two weeks uh, have a good night and i'm like uh, what i get to leave i'm going i get a ticket that's all i'm getting is a ticket and i'm like well, i fucking love washington <laughs> this is the washington best is day. the best I holy shit washington. i literally almost pooped myself <laughs> like i thought i was gonna go to jail for years and that's... washington's like hey bud and what year was that uh 2001 yeah that's wild it fucking baffled me I called like all my dudes back in uh, back in Texas when I finally Can't got to a phone. Move. I'm like, man, this fucking happened, but this was the result. And they're like, what? And, I'm, and then so and then so I did go to court, and obviously they found me guilty of whatever the fuck it was, possession with no intent, right? No yeah. intent to sell, just possession. Intent to kick it. Yeah. Intent to, kick <laughs> intent it. to chill. And so I, chill. I did one day in what they considered a work release program. I went to Everett County Fairgrounds. And and had to work on the fairgrounds shoveling horse shit for a fucking day. That was it. I would do that for free. It was the best. And so and it was so <laughs> it was loose. The best. Would... It was so loose that one of the there, there was like ten of us. There was like ten of us there. <laughs> you guys smoked the blunt? Yes. No, dude. <laughs> yeah. And so I got I, I I fucking so they they the the warden or whatever the fucking dude comes over is like, hey, you know, we're like we're gonna do this and that and all this shit and we're fucking don't fuck up and don't make me do this and blah 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 and we'll be fine. I'm like, all right, whatever. And then like this dude leans over and he's like, hey, I hit a pipe on the way to the bathroom in the horse stall. So there's a lighter next to it. You did tell me about that. Like, next to the shit. horse. Dude. And so like every time we went to the bathroom, we just got fucking hitting this pipe. He had a little jar we had underneath. We'd fill it. Yeah. Everybody was just on the honor system to just fucking. I'm like, I, oh I my love God. Washington. That's like so, so much. Shawshank Redemption shit. <laughs> right. Andy Dufresne doing fucking taxes on the roof. <laughs> Andy Dufresne. Right, dude? <laughs> fucking hell, man. That's so fucking yeah, funny. It was great. I loved it. And you know, it was I fun. do love this state. I, you know, as 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 interesting as Washington can be at times, you know, with the weather and sometimes the politics. This is where I want to be. I really enjoy this place. Yeah, I you do know, too. There's so much to offer. There's so much like diversity. There's little pockets of like all the different uh, environments you can possibly imagine. You know, yeah. thought process, art, music, all that shit. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, I love this place. Yeah, and well. I can't say that I haven't ever seen it because I have, but I guess the topic we'll finally get to is like, I haven't had my sack (laughs) tap that much in Washington state. Well, I mean, how long have you been out of the restaurant industry though? Oh my God. It was such a fucking dumb. It's such a, okay. So what we're talking about is just like weird things that certain gender are like stereotypes. Right. Yeah. And but like so, there's this thing that guys do, and I guess like as I was actually doing some, I guess we call it research <laughs> on, <laughs> on sack tapping. <laughs> I was looking up articles. Apparently, like it's become a TikTok <coughs> trend, and it's uh, 
it's dangerous because people are like losing testicles because people are getting hit so hard. Well, people are okay. So like when when we were growing up doing it, no one was doing it to get viral. And so I feel like right. if you're sack tapping and it's a trend, you have to like keep upping the game. Yeah. True. So if True. I can see how people were losing well, balls like, I mean, left and right. Two thirds of jackass is them just kicking each other in the nuts. Really yeah, is. I don't know how those like guys... Johnny Knoxville well, legitimately is like, yeah. He is yeah, a yeah. his whole his whole body is fucked. I think he was yeah. on like he had a like colostomy bag for a while. Holy Jesus. He he actually I think lost a testicle or something yeah. something like that. Blew like, one up, yeah. Yeah. But you know, and I, I just I don't know. You know, I I I kind of understand just like, you know, these, these games that we play with each other, but at the same time, like, I think where I get kind of hung up is like, there's all these, these, these very like male centric, like grab ass, slap towels, yeah. tapping nuts, Greco Roman wrestling. Yeah. But then there's also this overtone of like, and it's getting it's getting better. Right. But there's this, there's still this overtone of like anti homophobic kind of like, Thing. And yeah. it's like, well, how are we okay with like, like randomly grabbing some dude's testicles? But then we're we're gonna like throw like two dudes in love is fucking weird, right? So, yeah. so, uh, well, I was shit, thinking yeah. about this on the drive over, and I feel like <clears throat> men's bonding is uh, not again hashtag not all men, ugh, but like uh, a lot of men's bonding is physical and about how much they can hurt each other but in a fun like quote fun way there's that yeah and so i feel like maybe i don't know like in my brain i was like maybe every guy is a little gay and that the bonding that they do to to make it not uh like sweet and sentimental they have to add pain to it or something like that i I don't i don't know like because like i've never because women just don't do that. We yeah. have groups of women together, and we get like wild and crazy. There is never any kind of physical harm. So I heard stories about a friend of mine who was in the Coast Guard, and he told me this saying, it's not gay if it's underway. <laughs> and it's just like, he's told me a story, you know, I'm not obviously of like, two dudes fucking, you know, because that would be a little too obvious. Sure. But literally described a scenario in which there were two dudes in their underwear with their shirts off, like, wrestling each other, like, yeah. kind of Greco-Roman. And he's yes. Like, he says he took a step back, and he's just like, isn't this kind of, you know, yeah. <laughs> Like, he didn't say that out loud, but that was his thought. But it's like, the, the guys that try to fight it the hardest, like, I don't, I, I don't know how to put words to what I'm trying to say without it sounding gross, but, like, it's... They, there's some kind of physical maybe because our culture they don't we don't have men that will hug and kiss each other or hold hands I've been to other countries where they do do that yeah. where they can go out for a night and guys are holding their you know each other's hands and it's just platonic and it's fine and they're just showing affection kissing each other on cheek goodbye goodbye um, but we don't have that in America and so I'm like I'm wondering if men are still craving that physical contact, but they don't want to be vulnerable in it. So they turn it into a pain thing. I can definitely see that. Well, um, I mean, I know it's funny because uh, <laughs> Tiffany reads quite a few books about shit like, not shit like this, but right now. Sack she, tapping? Sack tapping. Yeah. Yeah. Sack tapping. She's read the entire compendium on sack sure, tapping. Sure, sure. <laughs> but no, she's reading a book about kind of this kind of thing. Totally forgot where I was going. Yeah. <laughs> but just the, the, the whole idea, oh, no, it's along the, the ideas of a lot of men or dudes, whatever the fuck, don't really... I know you go to, like, men's circles a lot of time, and yeah. men don't, customarily, don't hold space like that. No. Yeah. Like, I mean, I've been fortunate, and I also had help, and I'm, you know, years ago, but, like... I've got an open relationship with quite a few of my friends, male friends, where we can talk about some of this shit. Mm-hmm. But a lot of dudes don't have that. Right. Like, uh, the overall majority don't have that. Right. Nor do they have a kind of structure in place to where they can actually address a lot of these issues. So mm-hmm. maybe sack tapping and fucking Greco-Roman on a ship when you're out there for three weeks yeah. with fucking 80 guys. It's like a primitive way of trying to bond yeah, and Zog. trying to be close yeah, and trying needs, to create yeah. community. But like you're doing it as a, it with a child re, uh, uh, reptile brain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I, I actually, uh, I can I can relate a lot to that. I mean, in the in the men's circles and stuff that I've been a part of, I think we talked about this a little bit last week or yeah. before, but there's, you know, that anger side and that emotional side because there's not like a societal norm to where we can express those those emotions and feel like space is being held. Mm-hmm. Like there's immediate judgment if those emotions come out. So, yeah, I think to your point, you know, when you get some guys together that don't have the, maybe the vocabulary to talk about, like, the emotions that they're feeling, tools, some of that, those tools, those tools come yeah. out as, you know, let's slam our bodies together yeah. or let's, you know, randomly slap each other with towels. Because, yeah, like, we have some friends that uh, they're a, a couple, or she's French and he's Israeli. Um, and they are like the friends that they have come over, uh, the, the, the company that they keep are all from those countries. Very affectionate. Oh my God. Very like the affectionate. guys are all like loving and they grab the back of the head yes. and, you know, kiss on the cheek and like just loving, no sack tapping. And the other, but they show the embrace and the, and the, and, the, and, and if there's no shame to it at all, you no. know, they're like holding each other's faces and like. It, it's, it's beautiful. Well, the mistake that beautiful. men in America make is that they equate vulnerability, physical touch, and emotion to gay. Right. Which none of them have anything to do with the other. Right. It's just like they have attributed these traits as to all-encompassing, not not lifestyle, but um, just like a sexual preference. Like yeah. it, 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 one has nothing to do with the other. And even like how men address their sons – they will call their daughters sweetheart or they'll call their daughters, you know, angel or um, uh, honey or something mm-hmm. like that. But you never see them call their sons that. Right. It's always sport, champ, uh, tiger, whatever. And I've seen men from other countries that will call their sons like honey or sweetheart. And even me witnessing that, I'm like, oh, that's odd. Like, I, that's my reaction of just like, oh, that's an odd thing to say. Yeah. And I'm like, it's really not that odd. Yeah, I'm just I, so yeah. used to. I was uh, checking into a hotel like a year and a half ago. And uh, the guy who was checking, I don't know how we got on this subject. He referred to his son as a pussy. <laughs> so, oh, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it doesn't Christ. always, yeah, exactly. Affectionately? Yeah, I think he was talking yeah. bad shit yeah. about his son. I'm uh-huh. just sitting there going like, cool. Wow. Yeah. So... Yeah. <laughs> Gonna need two room keys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I've, I've, you know, been in the yoga community now for about ten years, uh, taking and teaching, and, and that has given me an opportunity to really embrace loving humans in a in an open way yeah. and not having a connotation around it and not having like some weird ritual like sack tapping or yeah. towel snapping or something like that around it. You know, and it's 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 really nice to be able to uh, you know walk in and and embrace another human being in mm-hmm. a very platonic and loving way, male, female, whatever gender you recognize as, and feel like that reciprocity from it. You know, right. and there actually I read something the other day. It was kind of cute. Uh, it was uh, this uh, not call it a study or whatever, but. Uh, this person was saying that, you know, you need four hugs a day to survive, mm-hmm. eight hugs a day to thrive, and 12 hugs a day to uh, to grow. Also, hugs lasting longer than 10 or at least 10 seconds, like yeah. it releases a chemical, like serotonin in your brain or chemicals yeah, in your totally. brain. So there's like physical uh fucking benefits 10 though do you have any idea how long 10 that is? seconds that's is a, a long, long time. motherfucking long time. time. But I, I did it, <clears throat> I did it with, um, because I, I, I read something similar and I was just like, I just want to see. And so I've been trying to do that with with Mandy. And mm. it's like you do hit that point where you're like, ah. Oh. Right. You, like you can feel something different in your body happen yeah. when you kind of embrace longer than just like a one yep. one quick hug. There's a, what's it called? The Heart Something Institute. I can't remember. But they're basically, they're... they're Might focused. be that. Yeah, that sounds right. HSI, you know. Yeah. Um, their their focus is uh, Heart Bios Field Institute. It's something, it, right? Yeah. It was something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was fancier. Uh, they uh, they they uh, they're studying the uh, the bios field of the heart and what the heart receives. And what they're finding it's very interesting is that like the heart actually takes in more information than the brain does. And so the heart takes in this information and then it either moves it up to the brain if the brain needs to do something about it or it moves it down to the gut because the gut brain. Yeah. And so it's this weird kind of like we have so much information coming in through the heart, you know, and when we can connect our hearts to somebody else 
And a lot of that might sound like woo woo or whatever to people, but it's interesting now that we're finding proof of this. You mm-hmm. know, we have some science for the people that need the science for it, which is fine, right? Yeah. And, it, and you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a past life, I needed the science for it. And even for some things that are coming out now, I'm like, I'd like to see some of the data behind <laughs> yeah. this. Because, yes, I feel a lot of shit that I can't explain, mm-hmm. and I don't expect anybody else to understand that. Uh, but if somebody's exp- explaining something to me and there is supporting data, that I makes me feel better. That. Yeah. I would yeah. love to see that. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, <clears throat> I think also, I mean, we just fucking have this tendency to just need to fucking explain everything. Yeah. yeah, we do. Like on a yeah. bigger fucking thing, it's just kind of like, yeah, it just feels right. Yeah. It's like, well, Can't that be yeah. enough? There's yeah. A... It's like, I mean, fuck, I, I don't believe in a lot of shit, but it's like, ah, bad vibes, man. I never got those vibes off that person, man. Just yeah. Bad vibes. Yep. Mm-hmm. Vibes, man. Squiggly lines when they squiggly. came across. <laughs> <laughs> not, not vibing. Sharp squiggly lines. <laughs> Sharp squiggly lines. Several of them. Yep. Well, that's our, you know, and that's a, actually funny. It's another thing that a lot of men don't, aren't encouraged to, uh, to explore is that intuition. Right. And, you know, mm. you have that intuition where we all have it, you yeah. know, it doesn't matter what you're born as every human has an intuition, even, you know, animals. But, you know, if we're not taught to embrace that intuition and explore it, then it atrophies like a unused muscle. Mm-hmm. You know, we can get it back. But, you know, if we can get to a point to where, you know, we can start to embrace our intuition a little bit more and talk about it instead of just trust your gut. You know, a lot of the intuition stuff is seen as witchy or, you know, whimsical or whatever, you know. So, but as I've kind of transitioned into trying to trust my intuition a little bit more, I mean, it still falls. I still fall on my face sometimes because it is still a practice, right? Mm -hmm. But the times it does kind of make sense and pan out, it's, it's really impressive, you know, and it's really moving to be like, oh, wow, I really did need to be here and do this thing whereas i thought maybe i did the new need to do this other thing right, right. yeah so, so yeah like you know male female whatever it is you know let's fucking embrace the intuitions embrace the hugs embrace like the human the humanity yeah you know? and i uh i mean question so like if if you if i'm in a a group of women that are somewhat even if they don't all know each other like Chemically in my body, I feel very safe for the most part. Okay. Like, or, or just like, um, not even all female, just like basically if anyone's there that isn't a, 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 a dude, there is this energy shift. And I'm curious, do you all feel that when it's just men? Is it a, or is it a, like, a, a do you feel like a safety connection? Like we're in a different space than if women were here, like, because there, there are groups that I get together with women where yeah. it's it's not this the same when it's a mixed bag. It, not that it's bad okay. or good. It's just there's a different energy. This may come as a tremendous shock, but I've, <laughs> I've made some comments in the past that some would consider, you know, offensive. Most of which, thankfully, haven't been caught on this fucking thing. Not yet. Not yet. <clears throat> so I will say personally... There'll be jokes that I will not make. <laughs> right. Yeah. We call those growth moments. I mean, we know, I, I know that. Like, I know that energy shifts when women are not around and it's just men. Like, yeah. there are things that are said that wouldn't be said in mixed company. But I didn't you know. know if you all had that positive end of the spectrum also with the negative that might come with all men being in right. a room together. Right. So I know the locker room talk, like, for sure I know that happens. But yeah. I've actually, I don't know if you if you all experience that. Same thing that women are, uh, you know, queer queer people. Uh, mm-hmm. Like when we're all queer together, it's just like, oh, this is nice. Yeah. Like it, it, it's just an unspoken energy shift yeah. that kind of happens. Um, so the interesting part of that is, yes, I have found that, but it almost has the package or the it, the container has to be created for it. Mm. Like if it's just a like. If I find myself in a room that's just full of guys, there seems to be like, there still seems to be posturing. Right. Jockeying, Hostility a little know, bit. Yeah. Like, you know, what, sizing up of sorts. Right. right. And that yeah. could be instinctual. That could be whatever, you know, this could be like just barbaric stuff that we're just transitioned with, whatever. But if the containers created like in a men's group. Yeah. Um, I've seen beautiful things happen that I don't think could happen if there was a female or a woman right. um, presenting a woman present. Um, because there is that finally, it's like, oh my God, 
it, and it usually starts like, like the wall gets to come down exactly. i guess is what i'm it, saying yeah yeah as soon as like somebody says something like i don't want to be seen as the breadwinner and the decision maker and the person that has to do all the things, the provider. I don't want to be seen as that. Mm -hmm. And I don't think my wife sees me as that, but I still feel like I have to be that person. Right. And then it's just like, oh my God, somebody else feels that way. And it's like, oh my God, I feel like that too. I can't believe somebody else feels like exactly. that. And yeah. then it all starts to come out about like this aggression and the anger and the stereotypes. And, yeah. and so there's this beautiful layer that can be opened up to where you can share and you can feel heard. And you can't feel safe, but if there was a if there was a woman present, there would be really hard, I think, for a lot of those guys to step to that point and be that vulnerable. Yeah, and, and even like I, I feel that with um, you know one of my best friends, she's Native and African American, and she will hold uh, weekends. She's a uh, uh, she does these these mental health weekends, and it's just black space. And is m one of my best friends. I have never attended and will never attend any of these. Um, but it's, and it's not even like, oh, we're best friends and I just want to come support you. Like I know my, just my mere presence <clears throat> as much as an ally as I consider right. myself and even my closeness with her, there are things in that community that I will never understand on the level that these people will understand. Mm -hmm. right. So it's important to have those spaces, not to like, you know, saying this is better than the other, but like to have a, uh, someone in the uh, people in the same space that experience the same things that other people and other groups or minorities or, you know, sexual orientation or gender or whatever, uh, don't experience without having to explain it or right. defend or any of that stuff. And it, it's, it's so important to have those spaces for your own mental health. And I feel like guys really don't have that as much right. yeah. and it's, it's huge. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a it's a huge issue, you know. And it, as much as it's being talked about now, it's still not being as acted well, on as it could be. Well, okay, okay. Well, I mean, it's being maybe brought up. It's right. being like like, uh, you know, talked about makes it seem like I I feel like more people are in touch with their emotions and shit, and I yeah. don't really feel that's the case at all. Cynical, you know. But yeah. it's just like you know, especially those that are trying to find the space. We, this gets into a fucking thing about healthcare and fucking. Yeah. Your access to mental health, yeah. and basically, if you can afford to fucking do it, awesome. Yeah. If you can't, you're probably going to do it online. Yeah, not ideal from you know, but what you know, it's just in my mind that's people probably have had a lot of success with that shit. Yeah. But it's mm -hmm. just like I see it more. I think you know, there's definitely you know adults that are swaying more towards uh, you know understanding their emotional spectrum scale. It's becoming destigmatized, to... definitely. Yeah. That, that, I think that's the, the progress. That's on the progress. <clears throat> but so, I would like to see like, because uh, like you said, the, which was so interesting, like the space has to be created for that to happen. Yeah. I would like to get to a point where it's just intrinsically safe for you all, no matter where you are. Because like I could walk into an all queer bar or an all ladies bar and I feel that immediately like, I walls down, I feel safe, I feel different. And the space didn't need to be created for that because there's just kind of this unspoken thing that's happening. Yeah. But I, 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 I want that for men as well because I think we all as a human race benefit from it because it's a lot of the things that are happening in the world are due to people being unhappy or not knowing what to right. do with their own, you know, mental health struggles or being able to talk or verbalize things. Yeah. And so as much as like people can fight about like, you know, men have had it so good for so long and blah, blah, blah and patriarchy. And I, and I a hundred percent agree with all that, but like, like there, we need help <laughs> yeah. or we, we need a, to find a pathway to like help guys like, love themselves more or uh, because it, we're the ones uh, that are feeling the repercussions of that right, not happening. Right. Well, I think it's interesting. I'll make two statements real quick. One is that I think that, and this, I've, I've talked to some people about this and, you know, this is a hard one to kind of talk about because of the amount of patriarchy that's been going on, yeah. especially for white males. <clears throat> um, I think there's, get, we're getting to a point to where, Males in general, especially white males, are holding a burden that we didn't even know we were holding. Right. And have no understanding or way to, to release it because we didn't even know we were holding it. Yeah. 
and it's like I don't want to be the, looked at as the 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 the, the oppressor. I don't right. want to be looked at as the person that's you know writing all the rules and all this yeah, stuff because yeah, like, I'm not yeah. benefiting from any of these supposed laws, rules, or yeah. things that are being handed down. But at the same time, I'm being looked at as this like oppressive force, this aggressor, this thing. It's like. How but do that's we, not how who do I we feel like I am. Go? Yeah. How do we collectively let this go? And I think a lot of that is, you know, finding the ways to talk about it so that we can we can shield or drop the shields and, and release the masks. Well, it's, 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 <clears throat> I make that joke about like, hey, man, is anyone considered about the plight of the straight white male? Yeah. And yeah. like, you know, yeah, that's a, we, it's yeah. a joke. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, well, we don't even fucking... Believe me, I'm not on this team, but yeah, it's like, yeah. we don't even consider that a group really. Like, you know what I'm right. saying? Yeah. Because it's just like, oh, you're, that's taken care of. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. everyone else. Right. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. 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 And it is that sticky uh, in between too, where you don't want to be looking to other, the, uh, the oppressed uh, f- to fix the problem right. of the oppressor yeah. situation. But at the same time, there, if you just have a... Um, <laughs> I don't want to say like, a bunch of oppressors together, like nothing gets done. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, how, how do you find that line? And I think it's people like yourselves that are acknowledging that it, it exists, right. acknowledging, uh, playing a role in it. Just like I, I acknowledge, you know, my own white privilege and the role that I play in it and working towards, um, doing some education opens spaces community trying right. to find uh, a way to um not fix yourself but uh, it, start to focus on yourself yeah, well, yeah. yeah do a little work it's, 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 <laughs> and help uh, other because you are the ones that are going to have to be the leaders of the of the pack right. you know because it can't like in in all male spaces you can't have women come in and tell <laughs> you guys what to do like it's got to be within the own community so right. Right. I'm, I'm grateful that. Well, both thank of you God, exist. thank God, these two the leaders a, of the pack over here. alpha men right here are here to carry the torch. <laughs> Out of my way, shit thank bag. You. <laughs> no, not if I get there first. So, who wants a five star? <laughs> well, I see. Okay, so I see a lot of kids, and this is the other part I was going to make. Was I see a lot of kids that have this emotional awareness that the men that because I, I mean because even if you look at like people Robin and I's age, let's say like early 40s to like early 30s, like that decade in there, there's a lot more emotional awareness than we, than our parents had. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. a lot more emotional yeah. freedom that we have to feel this. Right? Yeah. And so you look at the kids that are coming up now and there's a lot of emotional freedom that they have. And I think that's very clashy with the way that society set up. Because totally. And that's a lot of the like the, the the great resign that's happened about people that don't want to work. I don't blame people that don't want to work. Mm-hmm. Fucking work sucks, right? Yeah. The way the work system is set up is bullshit. Um, so you have all these kids that have these emotions that they don't compromise, mm-hmm. right? And so it is again. I think it's that evolution of like, okay, now we're we're removing another layer. We're allowing more access to these emotions, and this generation comes up, and then the next generation. So maybe you know we're integrating this idea that we can start to move towards this, and without having to create the container, like you said. Yeah, yeah. But I do want to amend one thing because I don't play sports, and Robin doesn't at uh, play any sports either. But there are those like fucking for, for, fuck fuck. fuck it, well, hey. you're, you're golf, you do the things, right? <laughs> yeah, right? I don't do but team. I'm I'm team stuff. Right? Team sports. <laughs> but, <laughs> I don't do team sports. I'm good. I do stuff. Like a yeah. Fucking my mom says I'm the handsomest kid, the most handsome. The most handsome, handsome kid. I'm the handsomest kid. I had a sash kid. that I would wear in <laughs> class every day. But so, I will say this because I, I did leave this out, and I don't want to offend anybody by missing shit. But like, there are sports teams that are all usually males or something like yeah. that and those you know those groups of men tend to find some kind of camaraderie and do have that avenue as well so yeah. but you know that container has been created in a way yeah. you know it's still not just a bunch of random dudes that just get together and start like feeling comfortable and shit yeah um because the team sport builds that sense of community, trust, vulnerability. Right. You're in the trenches together. It's the same with like working in a restaurant, I feel like. You know, it's just like you're there for the good and the bad. So it brings those uh, those benefits. And I also, I, but I also feel it brings that hyper masculinity energy at the same time. So right. it's like, it's kind of like it bumps up against it. But we are seeing a lot more. I, I think you're right. Like with the new generation coming up, like it's they're they're a lot more aware of 
uh, the bullshit. Yeah. And they call it out. But... And the balance of emotions, too. Like, yeah. They're just such a good thing for the balance, you know? But I would like to see... I mean, as much fun as this is, and I get the, like, camaraderie it can create, but, like, even, like, shit-talking. Mm-hmm. You know, to, you know, that's something a lot of guys yeah. do. Like, a lot of shit-talking, you know? And it's, it's a lot of ego-checking, so I see the, like supposed benefit of it but there's also like how about we just don't and we just yeah be better yeah humans. yeah i mean yeah. and I, I see that with that's not exclusive too, you know? to sports or yeah because yeah. i would because mandy is her love language is <laughs> getting shit on by her friends but in a loving like if you can burn her in a really smart funny way that's like giving her a hug. Like right. she yeah. enjoys that. Yeah. But that also says something about We've created how you feel that, about yourself. Totally. And it's just like, this is how I accept love. So like it, it, it is, uh, while it's a valid thing where I, I, I get that, like you have to be a somewhat comfortable someone to kind of like, you know, shit talk and it is fun, but like that you're still kind of tearing each other down. So right. it's, yeah. Robin, you're very good at shit talking. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, it's tough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, yes, that is my red water yes, bottle, yes. Robin. What do you have to say about that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, but it's, it's, it is funny, though, because, I mean, that the context of that was we all worked together, and after I became a manager, I stopped shit talking on the floor and only did it in the office. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, yeah, like, some of the people I worked with actually, like, were like, man, that fucking, you're doing a great job, but, like, it's not as funny because, like, you used to say funny shit about, and I'm like, yeah, don't do that. I'm not, that's not good. Yeah. yeah. But it's like, I, you know, I would think in a perfect world, I mean, let's, at its base level, if you're talking shit, that's the, that's in my mind. And again, I'm understand I have a black belt in this. That's not the work of like a secure fucking person. It's yeah. not the work of like someone who's like, Oh, I feel so good about myself that I break down everyone around me. Right. Like, like, yeah. So, I mean, I think having a certain level of humility, I mean, is important, but it's just also like, I do think some people do need to be taken down a fucking thing. <laughs> yeah. So like if there is an element, it, like usually it has to come yeah. a lot of times in that fucking, that, that method, that delivery. Yeah. Well, maybe it's not going to be fucking typed in an email. Okay. Well, okay. So let's, let's expand on this a little bit. Said person. So let's take this and say this said, said person is a man. Uh-huh. And if said person maybe had a group or an outlet that they can express their emotions and not maybe be such a douchebag and deserve the vehemity of Robin Grether, yeah. uh, then maybe that that would have been the solving of the problem so that we didn't have to resort to shit talking because the place would have been found already, you know? Well, I mean, uh, it's funny when you got uh, when you got back into restaurants, you said I didn't like it was kind of cultivating a personality and a humor that, you know, admittedly totally. you, you yeah. laughed, but you didn't like the fact that you were laughing at totally. it. Correct. Yep. You know, and that's why, yeah. and that's one of the main reasons I left yeah. in the first place was mm-hmm. that like I'm not going to change this industry. No, no, oh, God, no, no. That shit's that's. I mean, it anymore, it's it's know? like till the end of time, there's going to be. I mean, now the, like people are, I guess, reporting it and kind of highlighting it, but like restaurant culture, kitchen shit, that's not really going to change. What, which is wild to me how it's so common and like it feels so normal. But I just thought, like, I'm what if you what were in a corporate setting and acting like you worked at a restaurant? Like, it would never fly. <laughs> and that says something. Like, Yeah, but see, I've worked. My, 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 my history in employment is dominated from, like, corporate. Yeah. I'm, like, yeah. no corporate. So it's not like I was just like, oh, I learned that as soon as I got out of corporate. Yeah. It's like, shit, we worked corporate together. Yeah, we did. All my restaurants I worked at were corporate. You know? Yeah. Way. Yeah, no, I just, you know, when you say that... Or like working in a doctor's office or a dentist office or like... You know, there are shenanigans or that happen in different places. Sure. But like, but Not on that near. level. Like, like a bear. Remember a bear? The, the yes! Buster, right? Okay, so he used to put mayonnaise underneath the bus tub handles. So that when the buster would have to go change it, they would get devil. fingers That's full of devil. <laughs> That's fucked up. That's hilarious. It's so terrible. Yeah. But yeah, like think about doing shit like that to like the copy machine at your fucking at right. Your, at your office. Right. Somebody would Exa- fucking. You would be in an HR meeting immediately. No one would find it funny. Like it's, it, it, uh, it, there's just no way. 
God damn, which is why I couldn't transition to a, an office job. Right, exactly. Like, I, I was like, I I'm broken now. No, no yeah. I'm too broken. The shenanigan time. The shenanigans is too strong. We still got shit done in that office. So, like, that's the oh, other yeah. thing is, like, I mean, I think I, I'm going to idealize that old job to some extent because I met some lifelong friends through it. But it's just like, you know... We still actually, I mean, shenanigan fucking more than I ever have at really any other job, but at the same time, did a lot from like an operational management standpoint oh, yeah. that I never saw in any other job before or since. Yeah. Dude, we... So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, as far as like communication and mm-hmm. organization level Definitely. and shit. The amount of fun that we had at that place was because we had that place so dialed in. Yeah. And yeah. yes, we could have done better at some shit, right? Sure. Well, of yeah. course, but yeah, we yeah. were actually always trying to do that. But the yeah. team that we had in the time that I was there, so yeah. what was that? Me, you, Candice, uh, Madison, Mads. Mm-hmm. Uh, Val... Um, Sam, Sam, Andrea, yeah, yeah. Uh, right. So Jamie, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was we grew that place by twenty percent, right? We grew a fucking twenty-five year old establishment that was fucking barely making it by the time that I got a hold of it, and then we built the team I just talked about, and through that team we grew that property by twenty percent. That's pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. A fucking fledgling, like an old ass fucking concept that was barely hanging on. All the regulars when I first started at that place, I was just go down on the sit sit at the bar, talk to the regulars. How I met Ron and all those fucking guys, yeah. right? And I say, you know, what do you think of the beer? Love the beer. What do you think of the food? Never going to eat the food. Yeah. Right? And it's like, okay, cool. So the beer dialed in. Got to fix the food, right? Mm -hmm. And so, but we just, through that, you know, we created the team that could not only make the place successful. Matt and John. But because Matt and John, yes. Because of that, then we got to have fun. Yeah. And that was the way I was raised. Yeah. Take care of your shit. You get your shit in line and then we'll have fun. If we're not in line, you're not having fun. Right. Because it isn't fun when things are chaotic. Right. But when things are stable, then you can mess around a little bit. Yeah. It's great. Coming from, that's going to be, I fucking hit the mic with my hands and sound like shit. Uh, Well, coming from corporate, and that was the whole fucking point was actually, it's just, unfortunately, it just literally has to do with numbers. So as long as, you know, so it's just like, literally like, not getting a fucking call from anybody that you do not fucking see at least multiple times in a week is the goal in my mind when yeah. you're dealing with corporate area directors, fucking, you know, district no news managers, is good news. you know, exactly. They don't fucking, they only want to hear the good shit anyway, but it's just like, if you're not fucking you make it so you're only, you know, you got nothing bad to present and then you could do whatever the fuck you want. You could be like, yeah, I was fucking painting with my dick in the office, but we're up 11%. <laughs> <laughs> saran wrapping Candace's desk <laughs> never did that but you know what I'm saying <laughs> thought like, about it thought dude, about it I, Kevin Kelly uh, used to he went through this string of, uh, uh, of drawing the, the dick yeah. stuff yeah I thought he, about that too. he called them dictures <laughs> instead of oh, pictures oh that's that's good and they're little uh, like little uh, dick interpretations on, uh, <laughs> on on post-it notes you know just yeah. like Baroque dick. No, it was, it was dick. cockroach. No, like literally. Like, oh, it's kind of like the, it was like it was like a oh, It was kind of okay. like it was like yeah, yeah, the yeah. end was of so super great. bad. Yes, yes. Yeah. It was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I had, yeah, I still have those actually somewhere. Yeah, I still have a five folder that I haven't gone through in a while, but yeah, it's still there. <laughs> All right, on. Yeah. all right. Well, let's stop slapping each other nuts and talking about our emotions. Yeah, dude, Save that was the never, testicles. That was never a fucking thing in my circle of fucking friends. We never did shit yeah. like that. Oh, never. my entire boys in my family, that's all they fucking my do. Brother's yeah, like, I have a scar on my hand from a lighter that my cousin, he, he uh, oh, heated up the end of the lighter yes. and then stuck it on my hand. And I have a scar to this day from that. But it was just like, I still remember that as being like, wasn't that a fun moment? That was so funny. Like it, it is a he branded me, branded uh, me. It's funny you mention that because that was a thing in high school for the guys. They would do that. They would light. They would hold it and and yeah. get the back, and then they hold it on their arm for yes. as long as they can. There's still guys that I know that have that scar branded well, on the, them. The, I match them now. Yeah, yeah. That's we have the crazy. same fucking and and uh, that's some uh, one of my cousins. Right. His favorite pastime with his friends was branding. And so he put a cross, he put a 12 for Seahawks, he put oh, the initials. Fuck. And I was like, this is your bonding time, dude? Like, I don't yeah. understand it. It's just pain, pain, like pain. Like the whole point of like uh, that, that meme that was, uh, if I could get tattoos in seventh grade, it was just nothing but Stussy S's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's going to seem like a great fucking yeah. idea at the time. 
Uh, well, branding's actually becoming a, a more of a yeah, thing. Scarification. Yeah, scarification. Yeah, scarification. Yeah, totally. Crazy. Yeah, man. I don't guys, recommend it. The healing time is way worse. You guys head-to-toe tats and shit. Yeah. I'm yeah. Okay well, with the that. healing time's a lot better for a tattoo than a fucking brand. This brand thing, it took... I almost it was green at one point because it was like oh, it was also two days before I was supposed to go to Ghana so I was flying uh, on an airplane to a different country with a gaping open wound nice and then I got there with no medical aid oh, and nice. I just I remember having to go to like a pharmacy really late at night because my hand was just pulsing and I was like I'm gonna lose my fucking hand it was like green yeah, yeah. and black and I was just like this was this is the worst and I had my hand wrapped for the entire entire time I was there basically <laughs> But yeah, great bonding moment. You yeah, know what I mean? Right, yeah. But yeah, no, I'll get a tattoo any day of the week over that. Fuck that shit. Oh, that makes me want to get a tattoo. Now. Yeah, I know, me too. All right, well, anything else on that tapping? No. Cup just, checking. Cup checking. Well, see, that's actually got a functional fucking use. Well, I've made, I mean, that... What's that, cup checking? That's... So in sports, uh, the coach would walk around and hit you... Slap you oh, see, see, oh, no. Is that where it came from? Okay, I wonder. so I want to be very fucking clear. When I did Taekwondo, I want to be, when we did Taekwondo, it was like we'd all be like lined up for a fucking drill, and then the fucking instructor, we would just tap our own cups. Uh, that I want to be seems very clear. That that uh, seems to make more sense. Exactly. Than someone else you know checking. Let like, me check. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But no, but that was, you know, because it actually serves a functional fucking totally. purpose. Yeah. Like, okay, we're going to be kicking. Around your nuts for yeah. the next hour. No, our coach it's is gonna actually... hurt a lot more if you don't have a fucking <laughs> molded piece of plastic right. surrounding them. Yeah, not to, not to keep beating a dead horse, but like our nuts. high school football coach testicles. Would, uh, <laughs> so our coaches would nut check us all the time, so cup check us. Not only with their hand, but with their whistles. They walk around and just swinging their whistles, and they either hit you on the helmet, that is or they hit you in the so nuts with the whistle. So fucking! Yeah. <laughs> I have so many fucking thoughts on that. That is so problematic yeah. on so many levels. These coaches were fucking terrible. That's like, awful. I, well, no wonder you guys are all fucked up. Yeah, yeah I know, right? Jesus Christ. All white males. Yeah, no wonder you guys are no all fucked up. No fucking wonder. No wonder you start oh my wars. God. Imagine my fucking band instructor just coming around, checking my fucking twat. Just yeah. making, like, hitting I it with scar a, me for Hitting it life. with a bassoon. Yeah. <laughs> just checking the reeds. Like, no. Checking the reeds. That is just awful. Just checking the reeds. <laughs> Is that embouchure up to? No. Oh my god! God damn it! That no fucking wonder. Oh, man. Yeah. How'd you all survive? Yeah, that's man, just that's like, fucking wild. Oh yeah, we all need men's groups, man. We yeah, we, hug each other, man. Yeah, Jesus right. Christ! <laughs> it's a very god good point. Speed there's, there's, all. There's, well, it's a co-ed setting in most bands. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I remember I changed my shirt one time in front of everybody because we were like coming back from a. Uh, a game and we had to get into our uniforms and so I was just like it was a big locker room big band room and I was way in the corner and I opened my locker and I was like I'm just gonna change my shirt real quick while the band our band instructor was talking and everyone was looking at him anyway and I remember changing my shirt and then my band uh instructor came over to me and he's like hi um so there are boys in this room that have never seen anything <laughs> and you can't be changing your shirt and i was like i didn't even think about it like i just i was like 13 and i was just like i'm just changing my shirt and right. i like because i just didn't holy shit yeah can you imagine never that... seen anything yeah. holy like, shit. i can't Balls remember like, how he worded it this he worded is pretty very... shit yeah oh it was yeah and i i, I, I would think i was a yeah, I must have been a freshman. Uh, you know, I had D-sized boobs, and I just, I, I just, like, I was like, I had a bra on. Like, it was just fine. I was yeah. kind of behind a locker, but I, I remember all of the eyes. I could feel them on me. I didn't make any eye contact, but I was like, people are looking. I wonder why they're looking. Your fucking, your band instructor's like, hey, Stacky McStack or something. You just <laughs> created a core memory for about 50 boys in here oh without God. knowing it. You are, you so, are, you are getting maybe wrapped go to in the a comforter and change tonight, her honey. Fucking shirt next time. He was very gentle about it. God bless him, Mr. P. But like, oh my God. I, and thinking back oh on it now, I'm God, like, yeah, I, I probably still live rent free in some of those guys' heads. Yeah, oh yeah, rent seriously. free. Just gave it to him. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just fucking yeah. gave rent, it to him. Rent free at the fucking Super Bowl rent parade when you flashed that cop. I was like, 
At the Super Bowl parade. Super, yeah, when I ran into you downtown in Pioneer Square. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, they've been out a lot. Yeah, they've been out a lot for a lot of years. Yeah, I flashed a call. Oh, I did. Uh, I, I used to flash bouncers when I was in college to get into places. I did that. Uh... I don't think I... Oh, and then I flashed you all at work. Yeah, so I guess in every space I've ever been in, I I usually make it... They've been out a lot. They've been out a lot. They've been out a lot. The more you know. Yeah. Damn. (laughs) Core memory created for a lot of men out there. You're welcome. So fucking funny. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Oh, fucking hell. All right. It's too funny. Well, then. We'll end on that. See you later. (laughs) Tits are probably out. That's so...